Welcome to another Tommy Emanuel tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at Saltwater. Uh, this is Tommy's Emanuel arrangement of the Julian Lennon song. And uh, probably for most people, I learned about Tommy Emanuel through the late Life at St. Louis DVD. And this was the moment when I switched off the DVD player and got my guitar and actually started working out what he was doing in this song. So this is my very first Tommy Emanuel transcription I ever made and I still love playing uh, this song to this day. So let's dive in, let's have some fun. There's only three sections. There is a verse and a chorus which are repeated the same every time uh, around. And there is a very short intro, but that intro does feature the stretch from hell. This is literally the biggest stretch I ever had to play in my whole life. So let's dive in. Guitar is in standard tuning and you do need a regular pick for uh, this song. So no thumb pick. You could play this finger style, but since I learned it uh, with a pick, that's what I'm sticking to today. We're starting out with a uh, E chord with a bar on the 4th fret and we're adding in ring finger on the 6th fret, 4th fret with the index finger bar, middle finger at the 5th fret and the bar that stretches across the 4th fret all the way to the high E string. For the intro we are also adding the pinky to start out with. So this is what it sounds like. First part of the intro. Then removing both the middle finger and the ring finger. So we're ending up with the bar at the 4th fret and the pinky on the 7th fret. And then removing the bar altogether, adding ring finger on the 7th fret of the D string, middle finger on the 6th fret of the G string. All the way through, you are keeping the low E as a bass note. So the three chords right back to back to each other. And again. Those are the first eight bars of the intro. So let me play them one more time, a bit more up to speed. Then we're moving over to the second part of uh, the intro. We're using the same chord shapes. Hammering on from the bar at the 4th fret, hammering on middle finger at the 5th fret, ring finger at the 6th fret. Same strings we used before in the first part of the intro. Moving over the bar from the 4th fret to the 2nd fret. Here it comes, the stretch from hell, if you watch the Live at St. Louis DVD. I actually had to rewind this the very first time I saw it on the DVD because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Tommy played a bar chord at the second fret with the index finger and stretches all the way up to the seventh fret with the pinky. This is the biggest stretch I ever had to play uh, in any Tommy Emanuel song, but even in, in any other song. So a bar chord at the second fret and playing the high E string seventh fret with the pinky. It sounds like this when you play it uh, back to back with the other chords. As if that wasn't hard enough already, he does repeat it two times and he even lands, he ends the intro section on that huge stretch. So one more time. And then we will uh, start into the verse. Now, playing a stretch like this, 
usually when playing stretchy voicings or, or, or playing fingerings that require you to uh, cover a lot of frets, uh, has a lot to do with the posture of your left hand. Keep the thumb low, make sure your wrist is nicely bent downwards and it's not fixated like this above the neck. That should give you a good chance to play most stretches. However, this one does rely hugely on large hands. So if your hands are a bit smaller and you can't manage, or even if your hands are a, a, a regular size, this is a huge uh, chord shape to get your fingers around there is as always an alternative so let's have a look instead of going to the A chord down below with the pinky added on top we are going to play the same A chord we used uh, before in the intro namely 7th fret with the ring finger on the D string 6th fret on the G string open B string and the pinky on the high E string it sounds a little bit different, but the harmony is the same and it actually goes by so quickly that you won't even really notice. So this is what it would sound like if you use that other voicing. actually works nicely so no need if, if you uh, find this difficult no need to drop this tune over that very large uh, stretch there is a, a perfectly uh, reasonable alternative play the A chord on the uh, sixth and seventh fret and you should be perfectly okay let me play it one more time a uh, bit slower so you can really follow along and I'll make sure I'll add that alternative fingering in the tablature down below So there you are, that's the intro. Now, time for the verse. I'm gonna play through it one time and then I'm gonna come back and explain all the different sections for you. Here we go. second time around it's basically repetition there are a few different bridges or transitions in between the verses but we'll get to that in a minute we're starting out with the same E chord we started out with the intro now cross picking or jumping or switching strings with the pick is going to be a huge part of this one so take your time getting this into your fingers it really can't be rushed you really have to program this and get your pick to do whatever you want it to do um, and make sure it always gets the right strings now we do build in some safety most of the time we are holding down a full chord so if you end up by accident on a different string with the pick it should always sound uh, in the correct harmony so i'm writing out uh, a certain picking pattern down below in the tablature but if you hit a different string every now and then it shouldn't be a problem as long as you're keeping down the full chord instead of only uh, fretting the strings you actually need to play uh, in the tablature so let's have a quick look we're starting out on the same e chord Hammering on with the middle finger to the 5th fret. So that's a Tommy Emanuel trick we see quite often. Really quickly pulling off. Ending up on the bar chord at the 4th fret. And this gives you an E major 7th sound instead of just a regular E major chord. So we're playing the same melody, ending up on a melody in sixths, 
pulling off pulling off or just regularly playing the bar at the fourth fret again hammering back on and sliding up two frets that last one is very tricky it's the sort of harp like uh, voicing in which Tommy Emmanuel leaves the strings ringing out across each other as long as possible so you're heading up the melody in the sixth and then B string, G string, pinky on the D string and then switching over from the high E string to the A string. And all these notes actually keep ringing out across each other. A big fingering, yet again, it's not the, the stretch from hell from the intro, but you, you are playing across five frets with uh, not really conventional uh, fingering pattern, so it might take some time. Then moving to a bar at the seventh fret. One of those really quick hammer-ons, yet again. And then one of those things that always pops up in Tommy Emmanuel's song, thumb over the side of the neck. So that's the rest of the melody again in sixths. So that's the melody in the sixth. As always, when Tommy Emmanuel plays bass notes with the thumb over the side of the neck, there is an alternative. You can leave out the thumb, replace the finger, uh, the fingering with the index finger, and it might be interesting just to play a bar chord right away to uh, make the next transition a little bit easier. So instead of playing this, you're going to play this. Exactly the same melody, but without using the thumb. So with the thumb, without the thumb, same melody, not a thing has changed except for the fingering using the, the index finger instead of uh, the thumb over the side of the neck. Maybe one thing we need to take a little closer look at is you're playing a full bar chord because you need that low G sharp in the bass, removing index finger, middle finger for the bar at the fourth fret, and then you have to play the same two melody notes on top but with an open A string, which means you quickly have to reduce the size of the bar from all six strings to maybe only three strings. And then we're moving on to my favorite part of this song, this exquisite little harmonic lick that's coming up. He's playing 12th fret on the E string, 12th fret on the A string, both natural harmonics. Then a really quick shift with the pinky to the 9th fret and then a bar, yet again some hefty stretching required, a bar on the 5th fret. Again, these strings have to ring out across each other and then you get this uh, very uh, piano-like sounding close voicing in the middle with the A, the B and the C right up next to each other. Full run. So now we're back into a melody in sixth intervals. So, but this goes by actually quite quickly. I play the two harmonics with the ring finger, moving over with, to the pinky for the ninth fret and then the index finger for the rest of the bar. This is not an easy fingering. I would recommend focusing on the pinky first and then dropping sideways down to the bar to the fifth fret. This part shouldn't pose any real difficulties. It's, it's a uh, 
a simple melody in sixth. But let me join the previous bars and this one together so you can see how that harmonic run uh, adds up with the rest. So let me start from... Uh The, the way this this just blows by it's a beautiful little detail uh, try to get this into your fingers if it doesn't work yet again maybe try palm muting leave out those two harmonics on top and just play two palm muted open a oh sorry open e and open a string you will sort of add a little different effect with those two punchy bass notes and you'll be able to keep the rest of the voicing intact. So that could be one way to cross that bridge as well, but really, really try to get that harmonic run in. It's my favorite part of the whole song. Uh, it, it's really worth your time and it adds a, a beautiful layer of guitar technique in a very melodic song. Uh, so let's see, let's start from the uh, harmonic run once more. Melody is sixth, back to the E chord. And then a really big audible slide to the 12th fret. Basically a dead normal C sharp minor chord on the ninth fret, barring we do not need this bass note, we're skipping that string with a pick, so no need to, to crowd this bar chord with a lot of unnecessary fingers, so we're just playing the bar, ring finger, ninth fret, uh, sorry, eleventh fret on the D string and pinky on the high E string. To the third fret, C sus2 chord. D chord, hammer on and pull off to an open E uh, string. Make sure this open E string keeps ringing out while you're adding an E chord underneath. That's the whole verse. So you'll be playing this, I, I think, three times in total. So this was the first one. Right after this, we're heading into a repeat of the verse. And then after the chorus, you'll be playing it one more time and then it's straight to the ending. So that's actually not that bad. It, it will take some time getting into your fingers, but there's not a load of uh, alternative fingerings, not a load of uh, variations on, on the same melody. It's always the same. Let me play it one more for you, one time, uh, again, uh, a bit slower so you can follow along and maybe pick up any details you missed along the way. transition to the next verse which works around a lot of open strings so you're ending up with a partial E chord moving over ring finger on the fourth fret index finger on the second fret moving over two frets yet again and what's happening is every time we switch positions we will be playing the two fretted notes and the open B and E string with 
a, a, a different pick stroke on the open E string every time. Even moving up further, 7th fret, 6th fret with the ring finger and index finger. Moving over again 2 frets and adding the pinky for the final melody note. So this is the whole part, played a bit slower. And then it's back to the same melody. chord with a G sorry with to an E chord sorry E chord with a G sharp in the bass so so that's the end of the second verse uh, one more time from the C uh, sus2 chord second verse completed. The third verse is an exact repetition of the second verse, so in terms of learning uh, verse sections, this is all you need to know. There is only one section left and then you can play the whole song and that will be the chorus. So we're starting out with the bar on the second fret, so sliding up to the fourth fret. Quick hammer on with the middle finger on the fifth fret, back to the second fret. second uh, bit is maybe a bit more difficult than it actually needs to be. Tommy plays the chord at the 4th fret and then plays these two melody notes in between. And then jumping back over to the 2nd fret. Now these two melody notes and these two melody notes down here are actually the same pitch. I still play it like this because that's how I transcribed it the very first time of the Tommy Emanuel record. Uh, but you could play this, or you could play this. It sounds exactly the same. I'm used to this fingering now, and I find it hard to switch once it's really ingrained in my fingers. But if this is your first learning it, you could actually just slide back down two frets. It sounds exactly the same. Uh, let me play those uh, two bars back to back with each other. second fret, pinky to the fourth fret, and we I do mean the pinky because you will need the other three fingers to form the C minor ninth chord that's coming up. One uh, little detail you do need to take care of is you're hammering on, playing an open E string right after that one, that fourth fret keeps ringing out across the open string, which they do clash a little bit, it's only a semitone, a half step away from each other, but that open E string has to keep on ringing while you finger the rest of the chord. But as you're playing this chord, that top E note is still ringing out. Back to the pinky, first finger on the second fret and pulling off to an open B string. Changing the ring finger to the D string and sliding up to the 6th fret. A C minor 7th chord with one little twist. You're actually raising the bar so the open E string can ring across the chord as well. So not 
high G sharp, but a open E string. So that's what you get right back to back with each other. over the C minor chord. This is a bit uh, tricky in terms of fingering and it's quite delicate since you have to leave that open E string ringing, ringing out. But now we're on to a bit easier section. You're moving over from the C minor chord, from C sharp minor to C sharp diminished. Take a minute to get this chord into your fingers because you will be moving it up and down the neck quite a lot in the next few bars. So we're moving from the 4th fret to the 1st fret with the middle finger and just leave out that 1st finger. So don't try to uh, adjust the fingering just to be able to use the 1st finger. Slide from the 4th fret down to the 1st fret and leave out the index finger because you have to slide up right away back to the 4th fret and then to the 7th fret. A really quick look theoretical inside the diminished chord. Uh, every single note is a minor third apart. So if you jump from C sharp to E, to G, to B flat and then back to C sharp. This means you can also switch this chord always out with a version that's 3 frets higher or lower and that is what Tommy Emmanuel is doing at this point. Always the same fingering, always the same picking pattern. And then we're moving over to a uh, basically the same voicings, only up an octave, so we came from the 2nd fret and the 4th fret. Now we're moving over to an A triad on the 9th fret, sliding up to the 11th fret. Maybe a quick look uh, up and close. You could play it the same fill you did down below here. So it's, this is the same thing we played down here, up an octave, so the first time you played and now you're playing up here, the same thing. Second time. With a little melody on the high E string. to the A chord, melody 9th fret, 11th fret, to the 12th fret. And we're arpeggiating a C sharp minor 7th chord, uh, sorry, a C sharp chord all the way through. And we're ending up on a open E string, uh, a string but this one has to be played actually really quietly because it's only a passing note onto the next chord. And while we're ending up here, we're playing a quick open A string, but straight to the next bass note, which is again a series of diminished chords. The exact same chords you played First ascending, and we're going to play the same chords now descending. But it's the same fingering, it's again C sharp, uh, C sharp diminished, E diminished, G diminished, the same fingerings. So let me take it one more time from the uh, high A voicing. Arpeggio, diminished chord, down 3 frets, 3 frets, always down 3 frets, to an F sharp minor chord, up with the pinky and then A 
and you're back off into the verse. Next first, next chorus, complete repetition from the very first ones. Uh, the only thing that actually changes is the ending and even the ending will look familiar. So I'm going to play through this uh, descending uh, part one more time, heading over into the third verse, heading over into the last chorus and then playing the ending and I'll stop as soon as extra explanation will be needed again. So here we go. Uh, from the uh, high B over A voicing. <laughs> Second verse, moving over to the chorus. to the C sus2 chord a few times. So we're ending up on this. Exactly the same part. Maybe a third time. Maybe slow down a bit. big open E chord. I've played an E at a ninth this time, but you could also end on a regular E chord. So maybe let's take a quick look at that pull-off lick right at the end. So open the E string, hammering on on the second fret, pulling off with the middle finger, pulling off with the index finger to the open string, fourth fret with the pinky, pulling off to an open D, D string. Ending up on, with the index finger on the second fret. And two. To an E major chord, in this case an E major added ninth chord. Tommy also adds a few harmonics. He grips the pick between the, the, the thumb and the middle finger and uses his index finger to pluck out two harmonics at the 12th fret, two at the 7th fret and one final harmonic at the 5th fret. So you get this. Now, the hard part about Adding in those harmonics is you have to switch the pick from the index finger to the middle finger at one point. I'm using the E chord to do that. But it 
again, it adds a very nice little detail to the mix. That's the whole of Saltwater. So have fun, try to get this one into your fingers. It's a beautiful song to play. If you're uh, used to playing with a pick, it might take some getting used to, to get those fingers into the mix. If you're a pure fingerstyle player who uses a thumb pick or just playing fingers, it might be a, a challenge to add in uh, the pick work. Whatever you do, have fun with it, uh, take your time and see you next time. Bye bye.